Hello and welcome to Exponentials 4.2, solving basic logarithm equations. Okay, so today uh, we're going to solve for x again, just like last lesson. And after a couple of steps, you're going to recognize um, how to solve for x because it's going to be pretty much basically like how you did in pre algebra and Alge 1. So it doesn't start off looking like something that's going to be easy, but it eventually develops into something pretty easy pretty quickly. Okay, so let's just get going. All right, so let's get the, the blue pen going. There we go. Okay, so let's write down our problems. We have log base 6, uh, 5x minus 2 equals log base 6 of 2x plus 13. Okay, so basically we want to solve for x. And just like last time, we had x in a very different spot from normal, right? Last, le last lesson, I think 4.1. The x that we had to solve for was a was an exponent, yeah. So we had to do some different steps to get the the exponent to, I guess, not become an exponent anymore. And once we had that happen, then we could solve for x pretty easily. Okay. So today, um, the x is stuck inside of the log. Yeah. So you see the x, the five x minus two, it's stuck inside of the log, just like two x plus three, it's stuck inside of the log. Yeah. So we can't we can't just um, start solving right away and like add two on both sides or divide by five on both sides. We can't do that normal kind of steps that we normally do when we solve for x because it's stuck inside of the log. So basically, you're gonna get rid of what they have on both sides that match. Yeah, something very similar to to what we did the last lesson where if they had the same base, then we could just cross it out. Yeah. So there is there's a technical aspect to how the the, the two log base sixes are actually going to disappear. Yeah, but what it simply comes down to is basically this. Yeah, if they have the exact same word log and they have the exact same base value, then you're allowed to just cross them out or cancel them out. Okay, and there's math behind why that can actually happen, but just just um, trust me on that and I'll, I'll show you guys during question and answer if you guys are really interested in figuring out why the log base six actually does disappear. Okay, but for now, let's just go with the fact that if you see the same base, right, base six, base six, and you see the log on both sides of the equal sign, you can pretty much just cancel them out. And if you just cancel them out, all you have left on the left side is five X minus two. All you have left on the right side is two X plus 13. Okay, so once we get rid of the logs, then yeah, our problem becomes easy. Yeah, we just got to solve for x, so get all the x's on the left side, the numbers on the right side, so let's let's just get going. Okay, so we're going to subtract 2x, because I want to get my x's on the left, and I'm going to add 2, because I want to get my numbers on the right side. Okay, so let's shift things around. So left side I get 3x, right side I get 15, then I just divide by 3 on both sides, and I get x equals 5. Okay, so key thing that you have to remember in this problem is you're going to be required to check your solution again. Okay, so whenever it says check your solution, or I remind you guys that you guys got to check your solution, then uh, please know that you actually have to. Okay, so we're not going to call this an answer yet because we haven't checked your answer. So let's just, let's go for it. Okay, so log base 6. And whenever you check your answer, plug it into the original problem. Okay, so 5 times 5 minus 2. And... They're not equal to each other yet, yeah, because we haven't proven that yet. So it's going to put the equal sign with the question mark above it because we haven't proven that they're actually equal. Okay, so log base 6 of 2x plus 13. Oops, not x. Sorry, so let's plug in 5. So 2 times 5 plus 13. Okay, and when you check your answer, just make sure your left and right side, they're not allowed to interact. Okay, so please don't do anything like cross out the log base sixes. Yeah, the two sides are not allowed to interact because this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove that they're equal to each other. Yeah, we don't know that they're equal to each other yet. We're trying to verify if the answer that we actually solve for is good to go. So we can't do things like add things both sides, divide things both sides. We just do each side separately, and if they come out to be the same thing at the end, then we're good to go. Okay, so 5 times 5 is 25, then minus 2, we're going to get log base 6 of 23 on the left side. So if I get a log base 6 of 23 on the right side, then the answer is good to go. It's been verified, and we can officially announce it as an answer. Okay, so let's see what the right side does. So log base 6 of 10 plus 13, right, because 2 times 5 is 10. 
and then we get log base 6 of 23. So the two sides match, right? They're the exact same thing, right? Log, log, base 6, base 6, 23, 23. Yeah, they, they're good to go. So they've been verified. So now we can officially announce x as an answer. We put that in the blank and we're good to go. We're done. Okay. All right, next problem. Okay, so once again, we're going to solve for x. Uh, and unfortunately, it's stuck inside the parentheses that belongs to the log. So it's, 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 part, it's, it's trapped inside of it, basically. So how do we release the x from the parentheses? Well, we just do like in the previous problem. We cancel out the word log base 3. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure the log base 3 exists on both sides, yeah? Because right, remember, in algebra, whatever you do on one side, you have to do the other. So if I cancel out the log base 3 on the left side, I have to cancel out the log base 3 on the right side. And when that happens, I get x squared minus 15 on the left side because the log base 3 canceled out. And on the right side, we get 2x, okay? So this is going to be a little bit different solving for x compared to the previous problem because we have a squared now. So I hope you guys remember what I taught you guys when I said you have a squared in your problem as far as solving for x, okay? And hopefully you remember that, the two things I always taught you guys, right? Keep x squared positive and get everybody on one side equal to zero. So right now x squared is positive, so I'm not going to move him. I'm not going to subtract x squared, put him on the right side. I'm not going to add 15, put it on the right side. I'm going to subtract the 2x and put that on the left side because, like I said, you want to keep x squared positive and he already is positive, so he's not going to move. Okay, and I want to get everybody on one side equal to zero, so that's why I'm going to move this 2x to this left side. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides, so I can get rid of it on the right side, so it's equal zero on the right side, right, that's what I want. And none of these three things are like terms, so since they're not like terms, I just write x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay, and you got three techniques that you can solve for x. You can do factoring, or complete the square, or quad formula. And this time, yeah, I think I think last time, I don't think um, factoring worked all the time. So let's just check because I have a feeling it's going to work this time. Okay, so are there two numbers that make negative 15 when you multiply and negative 2 when you add? Okay, so just think of all the pairs of numbers that make negative 15 when you multiply. So 1 and 15, 3 and 5, right? And play with the signs because you have to have a negative 15. And whatever numbers make negative 15 when you multiply, does that exact same combination add to make negative 2? And if it works, then it can be factored. And I believe it does work. I think it's x minus 5 and x plus 3. They work. Yeah? Because negative 5 times 3 is negative 15 when I multiply. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 when I add. Okay? So, so let's do this. So let's solve for x. And when you solve for x, you just set each of these x's equal to 0. And you solve for each x, each parentheses individually. And you get x equals 5 for this left side and x equals negative 3 for the right side parentheses. Okay? And I can't just officially box these and call these our answers because guess what we have to do? Check our solution. So let's do this. So we're going to check two solutions. We have to check 5 and negative 3. So a little bit more work, yeah? And plug it into the original problem. So log base 3 of x squared, so that's going to be basically 5 times 5, minus 15. And then it's not proven that they're equal, so that's why I put the equal sign with the question mark. Log base 3 of 2 times 5. Okay? All right, so let's put the line over here because, like I said, right, the two sides are not allowed to interact. So let's just work on the left side until I get something fully simplified. So log base 3 of 25 minus 15 which is eventually log base 3 of 10. Okay, so if I get a log base 3 of 10 on the right side, then negative, I'm sorry, 5 is good to go. It's been verified. It works. Okay, so let's do the right side now. So log base 3 of 2 times 5 is 10. Hey, what do you know? They match. So we're happy because 5 works. So I can officially add 5 to this answer. Okay, so now let's check the other answer. Okay, so let me change the ink so you guys know it's a different, different problem altogether or different checking altogether. Okay, so let's just check negative 3. So log base 3 of negative 3 times negative 3 minus 15. Okay, so be careful now. This is multiplication, yeah? And this is subtract 15. So make sure you keep your signs all straight in the way. And then equals question mark, because we don't know yet. Log base 3 of 2 times negative 3. Okay, and we can't make the two sides interact, so we draw the line. Okay, so left side we get log base 3 
of negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, minus 15, and then log base 3 of negative 6. Okay, so here's where we come to a unique situation where, or a unique circumstance where, we have this negative number inside the log, okay? So if we ever have a negative number inside our log, when we check our answer, that is the deal breaker, okay? So please keep that in mind. When you check your answer and all of a sudden a negative sign pops into your log, right, in this, in the parentheses, in that spot that I call answer, okay, that is the deal breaker, yeah? You're not allowed to have negative signs or zero yeah, inside the log. You're not allowed to have those kind of numbers. And if you have those kind of numbers, game over. That answer is no longer valid. Okay, So we're not even going to work on the left, on the right side. Yeah? And the right side eventually becomes log base 3 of negative 6. So it actually matches. And that's where kids are going to get thrown off. right? If I did the right side also, you're going to see log base 3. And then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So the, the two sides are going to match. So you're going to say, well, why doesn't the answer work? Because didn't it usually happen where if the two sides match, then they're good to go? Yeah, that's usually how we do have verification of answers. But in this situation, okay, we don't care if the two sides matched. We saw this negative 6 in this parentheses that belongs to the log, and that is the deal breaker. Game over. We don't even have to work on the right side. So we're kind of unhappy about this because we worked all that, all that time to get the negative 3 as an answer, right? And when we verify it, we find out it doesn't work. So just lightly cross out this answer. Yeah, don't scratch it out. Just lightly cross it out saying that I tried it, right? It, it, it appeared to be an answer that was going to work, but when I checked it out, it didn't work. So just lightly cross it out like that so I can still see that you actually got the, the numbers, right? But we're only going to submit five as an answer, okay? And you can just say um, x cannot equal negative three. Yeah, so that... It just verifies that we tried, but it didn't work. Yeah, not all the answers are going to work. Okay, so please make sure you check your answers because if you ever have this situation come up again, game over for that answer that you're checking. Okay, all right. So problem three. Okay, I thought I pushed. Oh, I did push the button. Okay, so um, back in which lesson was it? Lesson three point no two point something two point two. 2.1, 2.1, 2.2, one of those two lessons, yeah? I taught you guys about properties of logs, yeah? And I taught you that um, when you have a number in front of the log, yeah, it, it probably got there because he was originally the power of this x, okay? So why is that a big deal right now? Well, because look what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve for x, right? But we can't just cross out the log base 14 on both sides just yet. I mean, we're eventually going to do it, but we can't do it now because there's a 2 floating in front of the word log. So if I cross out these word log base 14, then what happens to the 2? Does it just join the x and go 2x? No, that's not how 2 and x are connected. Okay, Properties of logs say that, right, these two, this 2 can either be in the front of the word log, or he can become the power of x inside the parentheses. He can go in either spot that he wants to go. He can go here, he can go here, based on properties of logs, right, the fifth one that I taught you. Okay, so because we don't want to leave this 2 on the outside when I start crossing off the word log base 14. We want to put him back inside the parentheses. So we're going to send him back here. And he's going to become the square of the x. Okay, And that has to happen before you cross out log base 14. If you don't do that first, then you're going to think that when the log base 14 crosses out, it's going to go 2x. And you're going to get 2x on the left side. And that is very wrong. Okay, So make sure you tell the 2 to go back and become the power of x in the parentheses. Because if you don't do that, game over for your problem. You're not going to get it correct. Okay, So right side is going to be log base 14 of x plus 30. Okay, And now we have pretty much the exact same problem we had in problems 1 and 2, where all we're going to do is cancel out the log base 14, and left side is going to be x squared, right side is going to be x plus 30, and we're on our way. Okay, So just like the last problem, we have an x squared, so we want to make sure x squared stays positive. And we have everybody on one side equal to 0. So x squared is positive right now. So therefore, I'm going to move everybody to the left side. So negative x on both sides, negative 30 on both sides. Okay. So left side, we get x squared minus x minus 30 equals 0. 
And this can be factored again, so what two numbers make negative 30 when you multiply? And negative x, or negative 1x when you add. Okay, and what numbers do that? A negative 6 and a positive 5. We'll do that combination, right? Negative 6 and positive 5 multiply to make negative 30. Negative 6 and positive 5, they add to make negative 1. So this is the combination we want, okay? So let's solve for x by setting each of these x's equal to 0. And let's get our potential answers. x potentially is 6, or x could potentially be negative 5. It actually could be both of them, right? I mean, if we check it out and it works on both, then we're good to go. Okay? But that's why we have to check the answer. Okay, so let's just plug it into our original problem. So 2 times log, and always plug it into your original problem now. Okay? Of x, which is 6, and then we don't know if it's equal, that's why we're checking. Log base 14 of 6 plus 30. Okay? All right. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so this side is going to become... The 2 is going to go... Actually, yeah, the 2 is going to become... 6 is power, yeah? So 2 is going to become 6 is power, so it's going to be, oops, actually, I just said it's going to become 6 is power, and I didn't write it like that. Okay, so let's erase that, sorry about that. So log base 14 of 6 squared, which then becomes log base 14 of 36, okay? So let's see what the right side becomes. So log base 14, and let's add that up, we get 36. Yay, they match. And what does matching mean? It means that the answer is good to go. So we can put a, a 6 on this line because it works. Okay. Let's see if the other answer works. Okay. And remember now, you gotta you gotta plug it into the original problem. Okay, that's the key thing. You gotta plug it into the original problem. So 2 log base 14 of negative 5. And we don't know if it's equal, that's why we're putting that equal sign with the question mark on there. Log base 14 of negative 5 plus 30. Okay, so actually it's game over already. Yeah, and you're saying, oh, it's game over because we see a negative there? No, it's not game over because we see negative 5 inside this parentheses because this right side actually becomes log base 14 of 25. So that's good. That's That right side is fine. So why is it game over? Well, look what we have on the left side. Okay, we have a negative 5 inside the parentheses already. Yeah, and here's what you're going to say. Oh, but isn't the 2, can't the 2 go inside the parentheses and make it 25 because negative 5 times negative 5 is 25? Uh, no, you can't do that. Yeah? Once you once you plug in this negative number and it's there, right there, in this sense right here, then it's, it's game over. Okay, so this answer does not work. So we're kind of sad. We're kind of bummed. Okay? So make sure now, yeah? When kids make a mistake in this checking of the answer, here's what they do. They take a shortcut because they're lazy, and they put the square inside here already. But like I said, when you check your answer, you plug into the original problem. Not what you know it's going to become, because this 2 is going to change places and become that guy's power. You don't do that. okay? Because if you did that, you're not going to notice that this left side actually makes this answer of negative 5 not good to go anymore. Okay, so we're going to lightly cross out this answer because it's not going to be valid anymore. And we're just going to submit 6 as our answer. Okay, so please make sure you guys learn your lesson from this problem 3 now. Very important problem. Okay, last problem for today. All right, so, uh, oh, same situation, right? This 2, um, before I cross out log base 4, this 2 has to change spots. He has to become x is squared because when I cross out log base 4, right, I'll get kids that when they cross out log base 4, they're going to put the 2 and the x together, and they're going to make 2x, not x squared. They're going to make 2x because they didn't put this 2 back as this guy's power as their first step. So be very careful about that because that's where I get kids making mistakes all the time. So don't let me tell you one day you're one of those kids that I warned you about in the video that you're going to make this mistake, and you went ahead and, you went ahead and did that. Okay, Don't be that kid. Okay, so we put the 2 that was in front of the word log to become the x's power because of power property of log, right, number 5. Okay, and then now we can cross out log base 4. So left side we get x squared, right side we get 20 
minus 8x. Okay, and we want to keep the x squared positive, and we want to make everybody on one side equal to 0. So let's do our movement. So subtract 20, add 8x. So subtract 20, add 8x, and none of those three things on the left side are like terms. And because they're not like terms, we're just going to stack them in, in order, right, according to their power. So x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals zero. And once again, this is factorable. So what two numbers make negative 20 when you multiply and positive 8 when you add? And hopefully you say x plus 10 and x minus 2. Hopefully that's the combination you came up with, right? Because positive 10 times negative 2 is negative 20 when I multiply. Positive 10 plus negative 2 is 8 when I add. Okay, so we're gonna set it equal to zero. And we're going to get x equals negative 10. And we're going to get x equals 2. Okay, so um, let's check our answers. Okay, so we're going to check negative 10. So let's plug it into original problems. 2 log base 4 of negative 10. And then we don't know if it's equal, but that's what we're checking. Um, log base 4 of 20 minus 8 times negative 10. Okay. All right, so why is it game over already? Okay, why is it game over already? What do you see that makes this game over already? Well, hopefully you say that is a negative. And because you see that, hopefully it tells you, yep, game over. We're not going to even proceed with this problem. We already see that negative inside that, that parentheses. Negative 10, sorry, you, you are invalid. You don't work, okay? So we don't even work on any, any simplification. It's just game over. All right, so let's check out positive 2. Okay, so 2 times log base 4 of 2. And equals question mark, because we don't know if they're equal. Log base 4 of 20 minus 8 times 2. Okay, all right. Draw my line separating it so I don't, know, I don't mix them up, right? Or, or make them work together. So this 2 is going to use the power. He's going to turn into that guy's... He's going to change his spot. He has changed his location to become this guy's power. So it's basically log base 4 of 2 squared. Which eventually becomes log base 4 of 4. Okay? Alright, so right side. Log base 4 of 20 minus 16. And that becomes log base 4 of 4. And what do we notice about the two sides? They match, so we're happy. Yay. So guess what? x equals 2 is a legit answer. So we put 2 on this line and we're good to go. All right, so that was the video for today. I hope everything made sense. And it's a video, so if you need to rewind, just, just rewind as many times as you want till you guys understand. Okay, I will see you at question and answer. Bye-bye.